Hi everyone. So I came out for a walk because I'm bored as hell. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. The fakery is just beyond obvious. And I just, I'm astounded that if people can't see it now, they never will. They're not looking or they're not, I got something in my shoe. Yeah, they're not looking or not paying attention, not, not getting the, uh, they're not getting the right information, crossing their paths in the wind because you seriously can't I'll put my hood up hopefully that's better I just can't fathom how people can't see it And, you know, at one point I thought my dad was seeing it. Now I, I'm at the point where I think my mom is seeing it. I mean, well, they're seeing things that, that don't make sense. But they don't know why it doesn't make sense. And, you know, I keep talking about Aaron G. And that's because I don't watch very many channels. It's basically Meg and Aaron G. And, um... He was talking about how you can't explain to people what's really going on because they can't fathom the possibility of the evil. And, you know, I think that's kind of <laughs> a testament to what kind of people, what kind of beings we are because we can't fathom the evil I think I'm in the park where you're not supposed to be because it's all fenced off. Uh, no, the path is open somewhere. It's all under construction in here. Well, there's no sign that says do not enter. Who cares? <laughs> it's Sunday, like what are they gonna do? I don't think anybody gives a shit. So, anyway. So yeah, people just cannot fathom the evil. So one thing that's on my mind lately is why is everything fake and so obviously fake? A friend of mine thinks that they're getting sloppy, but the, that's not true. They've always been sloppy then. Like, it's always been obvious. We, they're just laughing at us because we can't see it. We're so stupid, we can't see it. But like, because we just can't understand why people would lie to us like this, you know? And I remember when I was a child watching things like programs about space. And I was watching these programs about space. And I said to my parents at the time, I'm like, why is it all cartoons? Yeah, the whole park is blocked off. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So, anyway, <laughs> I kind of like it. I kind of like that I'm in the park where I'm not supposed to be here. So, so yeah, like the whole idea that these people would put something on called the news, which is supposed to be truth. They tell us that it's truth, so we believe them. They put on something called documentaries, and they tell us that it's supposed to be factual and truthful, so we believe them. Why wouldn't we? Because we're inherently good beings. We're inherently trusting, loving beings. And so, you know, these... Uh, these people, they, um, these people, they tell us that all the stuff that they're lying to us about is true. 
And yet you look at like the freaking moon landing and it's so obviously fake. And then they make a documentary about the moon landing, pointing out all the flaws or some of the flaws. And then they make it questionable at the end so that you, you kind of doubt it. And then at the end you go back, which is what happened to my dad. He watched that British documentary pointing out, oh, there's holes and flaws. Why is this? Why is that? Why is it that, you know, certain aspects of it look fake or whatever? But they never do anything. They never point out anything real. And then by the end of the documentary, they, they tell you that, you know, it's just a, you're a figment of your imagination and it's actually true. So, you know, you get brainwashed all, ag- all again. And then I remember saying to my parents, I'm like, how come it's all cartoons? How do they get the pictures back from Hubble telescope like this? How do they, you know, if they're sending these images back from Hubble telescope, how come they're... CGI and they just said I don't know or they have you know as long as you have an answer it doesn't matter whether it's the right answer it doesn't matter whether it's true or not it's an answer and an answer just satisfies the gap you know the I don't know gap and so for them that's satisfactory it's not satisfactory for me does not answer my question. Now I have an answer to the question. So, I know uh, I'm bored and I'm frustrated and I'm, every day I wake up and I just want this nightmare to be over. It's fucking painful and, and stupid and pointless. And like, what the hell? I just, uh, I just don't understand why this is, how is this happening? How is this like real? How is this real life? How is like this fakery? How is this real? How, how are we in a world where this, this is what, what life is? Like, these are the questions that I keep asking. How? How the heck did it get like this? There are these fucking fakers everywhere. Everywhere, like a fucking disease. You know? So, I'm gonna have to go through uh, the gate to my property here. Might have to be quiet for a bit while I pass some people. But yeah, I can't, uh, can't understand how this is life. This isn't life, this is fucking death. So when I was contemplating what I was gonna do, essentially to pass the time because I feel at the moment, sorry about the traffic, it's gonna, just gonna cross the road here. I feel at the moment that really that's all we're doing is just passing time. Because all this is so absurd. This isn't real. It's not real life. It's just ludicrousness. I mean, You know, I understood before how everything is connected and um, in in the fakery world and all these people, the government, the media, these agents, they all operate together. I get it. But when I, you know, see how much fakery there is, just it's overwhelming. These so-called testimonials, these fake doctors, fake anti-vaxxers, these fake uh, people talking about 5G, these fake people in the news, these crisis actors, these hoax hoax crisis actors everywhere. They're like cockroaches. You know? 
I never understood how many there were, you know? And uh, it's just astounding. Like, where are they? Where are these people? How do they all live in like individual, in their own communities? Or do they live amongst us? I think some of them live amongst us and we just don't know it. It's why some people will say, oh, I know someone who died. You didn't know someone who died. You knew someone who was a faker. So I'm not talking about like any of these hoax events like 9-11 or Las Vegas shooting or Manchester bombing or any of them. Okay, so when 9-11 was happening, I remember saying while I was on the news like live, I remember saying, I wonder what they're going to call this event. Because every event in history has a name, you know? And, you know, there's some fancy name for, you know, the Turco-Prussian War or the, you know, World War II or, I mean, those aren't particularly fancy, but you get my drift, right? It's like some label they slap on it. And and I was kind of dis- disappointed to see that they called it 9-11. Now I know why, but... <clears throat> I got past some people. Some really cute houses down here. Like all this whole area. People have bought houses and done them up and they all look so cute all these little creative flair everywhere it's nice to see but you know it's part of the program it's like buy up all these properties do them up flip them so that you know people can't afford to buy a home anymore so Say so, yeah, I remember. I remember too when I uh, first realized everything's tainted. Trying to figure out, well, is there anything in this world that's not tainted? Anything at all? And uh, sadly, no. Sadly, no. Because everything. Everything is tainted by the agenda, by the poison that they've put in our ear. It's tainted by the money. It's tainted by the devil puppets. And so anything you do, anything, you know, you would think, okay, well, real estate, people need homes. No, it's tainted. Selling people a home when it should be available to them for free. Participating in this farce of an economy where people not only pay for their homes but then the the price of the home escalates to the point where people can't afford to buy a home and they're chained to a mortgage for the rest of their life and they don't actually own the home and somebody can come around and steal it from them and you know if you actually want to make a profit and make some money off your home which you really shouldn't be you shouldn't buy a home to make a profit. Your home should be a place where you live. It shouldn't be a freaking business. And that's what these freaking devil puppets have done is turned it into a business. House flipping and investments and having investment properties and so people can't actually own homes anymore. But also they, you know, jack up the rents by making everybody buy homes and rent out Airbnbs. So... Apparently the rent prices are supposed to be plummeting because students have moved back home due to the, you know, beer bug virus. And uh, so people have moved back home from students and huge amount of rentals go to students, huge amount. So without students paying for rentals, 
there's no there's no industry you know they're they're going to have to lower the rents in order to entice people to rent something and uh and then that's going to affect everybody else because they're going to have to rent, lower the rent for people who are already signed on to a rental agreement simply because if they don't, they're going to move. And then they're going to have to lower the rent to entice new people to come because they're just going to go to the cheaper properties. So I don't know if mine will lower or not because it's pretty low already. we we'll just have to see how low things go. But so uh, it's quite warm actually. I didn't think it would be very pleasant because it was a little windy and chilly. And uh But it's quite warm. There's a little humidity in the air. So there's this uh, crazy looking house on the side here. I'm walking in a ravine. And um, they have like uh, containers. Obviously a water reservoir collecting rainwater or something. And apparently, like, the bylaw is you're not supposed to do that. You can have one container, and that's it. But, seriously, fuck the bylaw. I used to... I used to wash my hair with rainwater. And it was a huge difference. It was so much better. So... So yeah, anyway, back to the idea of how do we live in this place? How is this place, how did it get like this? Honestly, like all the fakery, I, it, I find it astounding. It's absolutely astounding. And obviously it has to be that way for some reason. The fakery has to be that way. Because they could easily, like I said, they're, they're Hollywood is everything to them. They could easily make it realistic. Like Hollywood is way more realistic than real life. We have top-notch actors. They have top-notch acting training. But they choose not to. They choose to have these low-level crisis actors who can't act worth a lick, can't cry, can't remember their lines. On purpose. It's on purpose. I know background performers who can act better than that because most of the people who do background performing want to be an actor. And they have so much training. Some of them are professional opera singers, professional theater actors, professional actors. They just need money because trying to make a living at being an actor is impossible. First of all, we're in Canada. And even though we have a huge industry here, it's like it's massive and it just keeps climbing. And most of the productions from, you know, from the States come up here and they just opened a big Netflix studio here and they're opening a couple other studios. So the production is just astounding. It's just super high. But all the roles are cast out of LA all the major ones. So all the major rules are cast out of LA. All we get are the little rules. And so yesterday I was watching, or not yesterday, day before, Friday night, I was watching Schitt's Creek because I was supposed to be in the finale. I was supposed to be in the last scene, but they cut it and they put something else in. So I tortured my parents with watching it and I wasn't even in it. And then we watched the, there's like a making of and the lies in that video were just, (laughs) okay. So they said basically that they, 
they cast Catherine O'Hara, who's like a comedian, part of the program, obviously. And uh, the show is produced by Dan Levy, who's Eugene Levy's son, and Eugene Levy as well. And he's got his daughter, Sarah Levy, in it. And then there's some other Levy in there as well. And so they, they had this ruse of how they auditioned these people from L.A. This one tranny girl who plays Dan Levy's sister, she's an obvious tranny, she says, I hadn't worked for two years and I had really literally just given up. And then I, that day I get an email saying I have an audition tomorrow and then I booked it. Fuck you, you liar. <laughs> I mean, you hear these stories all the time and they're not true. So it's just to give us the impression that they actually auditioned people. So yeah, there's, um, so there's, uh, what was I going to say? So yeah, and then they showed this other, this story, the whole point of me telling this story was this Canadian girl, and I say girl lightly, I think she's trans too, she, she got the part of Dan Levy's, uh, fling, who runs the hotel, motel, anyway, she, she alleges that uh, she was, she had an LA agent who she said, oh my, my audition skills were so bad and I had given up auditioning and I told my agent in LA I couldn't audition, I'll just tape it. And so my agent dropped me. But my Canadian agent said, no, they're very friendly and they're Canadian so you can go and audition for them. So I did and then I landed the part again. Fuck you, you liar. So yeah, they they don't they don't audition these people. I have no idea where I am right now. <laughs> I just found this uh, this path that I used to run down this path when I lived in the previous rental I was in, and I'm so grateful I don't live there anymore. Seriously. All right, so moving on to another tangent. When I look back, and I don't know, maybe you guys do the same, and you reflect on your life and how you got where you are, and, you know, was it actually a good thing or a bad thing, and some of the bad things actually turned out to be good things, and yet they felt really painful at the time. And so I'm trying my best now to look at the bad things as just a a transition. Oh, there's a rabbit, a big one. It's just a transition. It's not necessarily bad. It's just a thing that happens. It's necessary for the next thing to come through. Which is helpful because then you don't get caught up in pain and suffering and drama. So, hang on. So yeah, I was looking back on my experience living in that rental and it, it suited my needs at the time, but the landlady, she, she kept her nose in my business all the time. Drove me nuts. And um, so I, my life got uprooted. And, you know, I had to move back in with my parents again. And at the time I thought this was a bad thing, but the universe swept in and took care of everything, got me a job right away, made me a decent amount of money so that I could find a new apartment and everything just fell into place. And I'm so grateful for where I live now. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the, the, the apartment and the people and the energy and the space and being out of that place with that quacky landlady, but also for being you know, close to my family. And I just wonder if it was all by design. Because 
you know, there wasn't any, any other way. I think I'm going to go this way. There wasn't any other way for me to navigate it, you know. It was kind of thrust upon me in a way. And um, I got a lot out of it, even though it was incredibly negative, like deeply negative. And I've healed from it. For the most part, I've healed from it. But it's like, I don't know, there's some things that still, I don't think that, I mean, it's obviously a deep lesson that you're not supposed to totally heal from. That's the point. Hello again. <laughs> so, so yeah, you're not supposed to totally heal from these experiences because that's the lesson that you learn.